Hello again. Great that you're back because otherwise you'd be missing out on some great visualization stuff. So, like I've mentioned in the first lesson, we'll be using Geoffrey Chart for some of the plotting because Wacker's plotting is a little bit complicated and it's much, much nicer doing Geoffrey Chart plots. So, if you haven't done already, please install the Geoffrey Chart off screen renderer package, which I already mentioned earlier. And if you're looking for more Java doc on the JFree chart library, you can do that on the jfree.org website. The classes that we'll be touching on for JFree chart will be basically data sets that JFree chart needs for plotting, um, chart factory for creating plots, and the chart panel, which is actually used for embedding plots then in the GUI. And finally, some Weka classes for displaying trees and graphs. First of all, I'm going to start up Weka and the Jython console. And for the first script, we'll want to plot the classifier errors in a obtained from a linear regression regressor on a data set and plot these. But not just actual versus predicted, but also take into account how bad the error is. So, first thing, we're going to import a whole bunch of classes again. So, evaluation for evaluating our classifier. We're going to use linear regression as a simple classifier for doing the regression. Data source for the usual loading of the data set. Default XYZ data set is a JFree chart data set which allows you to store three dimensions for each data point. We're basically using the Z as the error. The chart factory for generating the plot, chart panel for embedding it, and the bubble renderer basically plots a bubble at the XY position using the Z value as the radius. Okay, so we're loading our data. In this case, it's a numeric class in the body fat UCI data set. Then we are configuring our linear regression classifier, turning off some bits we don't need, and also, also makes it a bit faster. Once again, we are cross validating our classifier with tenfold cross validation. And after the cross validation is done, we need to collect basically the predictions and need to compute the error. So what we're going to do here is quite simple. We're going to start with three empty lists, the actual, the predicted and the error. And we're going to loop through all of the predictions which we can retrieve via the predictions method and retrieve those predictions, store the actual and predicted and calculate the error, which is basically actual minus predicted and the absolute value of that. Having done that, we can then create our data set, which is a default XYZ data set. We are adding a series to this data set, which we simply give it a name like linear regression on the name of the relation uh, of the data set with the actual predicted and error and then we're using our chart factory to create a plot and in that case a scatter plot <coughs> and with a title actual and predicted as the axis titles and as a renderer since we not only want to plot a little dot at that location x and y we use a specific renderer the one that i mentioned earlier x y bubble renderer and then we are simply embedding the whole thing in a frame and displaying that let's run that and here we go as we can see some of the outliers are quite large, and the ones that are closest to the diagonal, the optimal case, are the smallest ones. And we can even zoom in if we wanted to, and it gets adjusted accordingly. The next script handles 
ROC curves for classification because the area under the curve and how the curves for the various class labels are is actually telling you quite an important story about how well your classifier is doing. So in this case, once again, new tab, and we're going to import a whole lot of classes again. In this case, we're evaluating naive base and um, we're using a threshold curve class from Weka, which allows us to calculate the ROC curve data, among other things. Since we're only plotting x, y in this case, um, we don't need an x, y, z data set, just an x, y one will do. And once again, chart factory and so on, which we've already seen in the other one. Now, once again, we load data set. <clears throat> in this case, we are loading the balance scale UCI data set, which has a nominal class, setting the class attribute to the last one again instantiating our naive base classifier, no options to be set, and cross-validating that once again with tenfold cross-validation to obtain the uh, statistics. We are creating our data set again, and since we want to plot the ROC curves for all the class labels, we're going to have to loop through all the labels of course so what we're going to do here is we're going to have a variable which is going to ranging from zero to the number of values minus one that the class attribute has okay in each case we're going to create the threshold curve data so we instantiate a threshold curve and then use the predictions of the evaluation class and the current index of the label that we're interested in and create curve data from that. And we can simply extract then those columns of data from the data set curve that was generated and put that into a list. So we're looking basically at the false positive rate versus the true positive rate that we want to plot and then since we are already have a data set we are adding a plot series basically to it and to make it a bit more interesting we're also calculating basically the ROC curve for each of the class labels and use that as the label for the plot okay now we're creating an x y line plot because we're connecting the dots rather than just dotting them around like it was with the bubble plot earlier um, put the titles for the axes down false positive right and true positive right and then once again put that in a frame and display it let's run that and we have our three class labels l b and r and as you can see, the blue line is the worst one. And if you look it up, it also has an AUC of only 0.719, whereas the other ones have almost one. As you can see, they go straight up and then really nestled quite nicely in the corner here and then plateauing out at pretty much one up there. So that looks pretty sweet. So this was basically using JFreeChart chart to plot some um, graphs. However, we can also plot some data using um, simple Weka classes. So in this case, we want to plot a tree that got generated by a J48. So once again, we import stuff. And as visualization, we're going to use the tree visualizer. And first of all, once again, we have to import some, load some data in, in this case the RS data set. We're gonna build an unpro J48 tree, um, build it on the data set, and then we are creating a tree visualizer using the graph that the build classifier returns. And then we're embedding the whole thing 
in a frame visualizing that and once the frame has been displayed we can also fit the tree then basically to the size that's on the screen running that basically have a nice little tree of the iris data set now trees aren't the only thing that Weka can plot um, the base net classifier allows you to plot network graphs and this is what we're going to do now so in this case we're going to use the base net classifier and the graph visualizer from Weka to plot the graph that this classifier generates once again like iris data set and we're going to configure our base net classifier to make the graph a little bit more interesting i'm using um, two parents rather than just one i am building a classifier and then i'm basically initializing the graph visualizer using the graph that once again the classifier return in this case it's in the BIF format or the Bayesian network interchange format I'm not mistaken okay once again we embed the whole thing in a frame display that and just like with the tree visualizer we also want to make sure that the layout is all right since we simply call here then once the frame is being displayed let's run that and we have our little network graph so if we click on the various nodes we can then see the probability tables we can inspect it for further so what we've done in this lesson is we use jfree chart for plotting classifier errors and rfc curves and we used the tree visualization of Weka to visualize a j48 tree and the base net network graph all right that's it for today i'll see you next time